Hello, everyone, and welcome. Joining me today is Rev Libari Dian. He is responsible for opening the office of one of the world's leading tech giants, NVIDIA, in Armenia a little over a year ago. Uh, NVIDIA is a technology company that's responsible for designing and manufacturing uh, pro graphics processing units, or GPUs. Uh, now he's in Armenia to participate in the second annual Femino Conference. Um, thank you, Rev, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. <laughs> so I think that the most common question that you've probably ever heard is, why did you open um, the office of NVIDIA in Armenia? Uh, but a year ago that you said that you hoped that one day Armenia will be able to develop enough so that you could justify opening um, a site here. So I guess my question to you now is, after a year, or a little bit over a year that has passed, um, can you say that your decision has been justified? Absolutely. Um, our office here is thriving. There's great energy. Turns out that out of all of the offices we have in every country or in, in all the countries we have offices in, um, participation in our office here post-COVID post is greater than all the rest of them. More people come into the office and work together uh, in Armenia than in any other office NVIDIA has anywhere in the world. Oh, that's interesting. Percentage-wise. Right. Um, yeah. uh, what we found is that Armenia is a very welcoming place for, for NVIDIA, and there's a lot of great talent available here for us to tap into. Um, and you've been visiting uh, and coming back and forth to Armenia um, since 2005. Yes. Um, I, like, what trends have you seen? What kind of, I'm sure you've seen uh, yeah, it develop it's, it's over time. It's been amazing, the, the transformation that, that I've seen here uh, over this time, and especially in the past five years or so. I believe that it's accelerated greatly. Uh, when, I, when I first came here, I was living in Moscow, in Russia. I, I helped open our office there at that time, which was new, uh, and lived there for four years. Um, my hope was that what I did in Moscow, I would be able to do here at some point. In 2005, it wasn't quite ready uh, for, for us. Uh, had we have opened it back then, we just wouldn't have had the, the specific kinds of talent that we need. and and the uh, culture around having a, a big tech company. Um, but but that's, that changed uh, years ago. Uh, I think that a big part of that has been, uh, quite frankly, it's been Tumo. Oh, interesting, okay. Uh, Tumo opened its doors to, to our Armenian teenagers here mm -hmm. over 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. And if you look at, uh, with, which generation was the first cohort that graduated. Uh, it's around that time I started feeling the transformation here about five years ago. Oh, so, so they start at, at 12 years of age. Mm -hmm. uh, by the time they're adults, you know, 18, 19 years old, that was seven, eight years. Mm -hmm. So I think they opened in 2011, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. So it was around 2018 I started feeling it. That's interesting. and. Do you think that you can kind of predict where Armenia is heading in terms of tech? Well, I think if, for anybody that's been here, if you go um, just spend any time in the city, go sit at any of the cafes, you'll see that there's a very tech savvy generation that, that lives here. Many are sitting cafes coding. I noticed them writing Python and C++. Mm -hmm. um, they're... Uh, there's a great amount of talent here and there's a great amount of talent outside of Armenia within the Armenian diaspora or many Armenians that um, were, were born and raised here <clears throat> but left Armenia for opportunities outside who are looking to come back. They want to come here and be in their home, but now they're feeling that there's opportunities. So you're seeing a lot of startups uh, and, and a lot of really interesting technologies uh, within these startups form in, within Armenia. It's still small, but it's very vibrant. And the potential, I think, is great. I think that, um, if I recall, a few years ago, Armenia was on the trajectory for like being one of the more um, successful. Like They were competing with Estonia, Croatia, Lithuania in terms of the tech uh, industry. But 
uh, how are we holding up now in comparison mm. to those countries, let's say, and maybe what are some gaps that you know, we need I, to address? Personally, I don't really like it when we phrase these things as competition. Uh, I don't feel it's a zero-sum game for Armenia to win at gaining uh, technology, technology companies, technology jobs. Other countries don't need to lose. Looking at it from the perspective of NVIDIA, we, we are in many countries and we go wherever we find opportunity to get the world's best people. Mm -hmm. and, and so all of the other countries you just mentioned would also be uh, potential places we can open offices mm -hmm. if that potential exists. Um, what we look for uh, generally anywhere we go, because we're on the cutting edge of technology, we, uh, we are inventing new types of computing uh, artificial intelligence was essentially born on our computing platform and we are we are one of the biggest companies in the world that are advancing this thing uh, we look for ecosystems that form it's a combination of academia with the universities uh, startups and other larger companies that that um, come and invest in the ecosystem as well and we, we, we're seeing the confluence of those things here in Armenia, so it made sense for us to be here. If those other countries uh, also show that promise, we'll be there as well. Understood. And uh, let's say we're not competing. Uh -huh. uh, we spoke a little bit about the great things that are happening in Armenia in terms of tech, but let's also talk about maybe some gaps that need to be filled that would really help us to push it even further. Uh, yeah, I think the biggest gap is in terms of technology, we have a lot of great talent and potential, but we don't have that many senior uh, leadership type, type talent yet. Mm -hmm. That takes some time to develop. So uh, this has been developing over the past decade, decade and a half. It takes a little time to get people that have 10, 15 years uh, of, of experience. Mm -hmm. um, so, so there's there's that, but that's okay. That's not a um, that uh, that's not a huge blocker for us because, as a global company, even before COVID, we had very liberal policy as to where people can work. We have teams that that are global and organized virtually. We can have leadership in different countries leading more junior people uh, and grow them up. Mm -hmm. Then we grow them from within. And uh, at Nvidia, uh, we we have a tendency to keep our people. They stay here for a long time. Mm -hmm. I've been here 21 years and that's not unusual at all. There's a lot of us that have been here a long time. So we grow our own leadership and I think we'll do, we'll do the same here. Uh, the the um, other gap or sets of gaps are more about um, finding talent that has um, skills and capabilities that are particular to the niches that we're interested in. Mm -hmm. Uh, NVIDIA started as making graphics processors. Now they're just called GPUs because they're used for a lot more than graphics. Mm -hmm. But we are the world's um, most advanced computer graphics company. We need people that know computer graphics. We need people that understand how to do high performance computing and supercomputing uh, with the type of computers that we build. Uh, we need people that that are most advanced in artificial intelligence and the foundational principles in computer science that's driving that. And so those particular issues, they're hard to find everywhere in the world. Mm -hmm. um, we need to grow, grow some of those here. And my recommendation for Armenia in general is because it's a small country, instead of trying to do everything or learn everything, go find the most important uh, gaps in the world with the types of knowledge that's needed by all of these companies, go focus on them, focus on AI, focus on simulation and, and, and other things that we're focusing on. Interesting. Um, so you're here for the Femino conference. Yes. And that's talking about, has, it has a focus on women in technology. Right. Um, so what are your observations on the diversification of the tech industry in Armenia? You know, I have to really, um, I have to say that I'm extremely pleasantly surprised at the participation of women in technology here. Um, computer science in general is sorely lacking in diversity 
particularly with women in, in, in this field. I've never understood why. Uh, at the invention of computers, they're the first programmer ever in the world was Ada Lovelace, who we named our latest uh, generation of GPUs after, mm -hmm. Ada. <laughs> She was a programmer and that continued up until the 40s, 50s, 60s. Most programmers were actually women mm -hmm. at the time. Uh, something changed, it seems, around the 80s and it flipped and only, only little boys were, got interested in it. We did something to dissuade little girls from getting into, into computers for some reason. It's, there's a double whammy for me. My background's in computer graphics, but specifically doing 3D rendering. Uh, before NVIDIA, I worked in visual effects and movies, building renderers for this purpose. And for some reason, it seems it's even worse in computer graphics than computer science in general. Uh, if you look at the pipeline of students coming out of universities in computer science, the number's really low relative to everything else. Mm -hmm. But computer graphics in particular seems to be lower, which has been a puzzle to me because you would think that computer graphics being at the intersection of the arts and and uh, computing that it would be more attractive to women. Uh, working in the industry in visual effects and in video games, you see many women uh, at these companies, but usually they're on the art side, not on the, on the engineering, mm -hmm. uh, engineering side. But something has changed in general, I think with artificial intelligence and robotics, which is an extremely uh, difficult multidisciplinary um, area, I've been seeing, just anecdotally, many more women in, in, in these fields uh, coming through the pipeline than, than in computer graphics and computer science. And so with that, that's, a, that's opened up the opportunity for us to bring in more women into NVIDIA in general, because this is a, a one of our, if not our primary uh, interest is artificial intelligence and robotics is the uh, sort of ultimate expression of that. Now, all that being said, what's happening in the world, I came to Armenia, you know, I've been coming here since 2005. Last year, when I started looking at uh, what the pipeline looks like, I went to Tumo Labs, which is for, for adults, um, not the normal teenager um, level to program for Tumo, but, but a boot camp for, uh, for adults. If you, if you go to Tumo Labs, more than half of the people in there are women. Uh, I'm, I'm getting hit up on LinkedIn all the time, people who want jobs, and they're mostly women. Uh, I feel we don't actually even have to go out of our way here to kind of induce it. The, the women of Armenia have decided that uh, it's good for themselves, for their careers, and for probably for the agency in their lives to have these skills. Um, and so, so I think it's great. My, my dream is that the Armenia office for NVIDIA will be the first one where we have 50% or more women in engineering jobs, not, not, uh, not only <laughs> marketing and HR and other things that, that you tend to see more female representation. Well, that's great. Um, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for this conversation. It was really enlightening. And for those of you watching at home, thank you for watching CivilNet.